So, fun facts. The ideal body fat in the dog is 15 to 25 percent of the total body weight. I thought that's pretty generous. That's pretty good. Uh, but that's really where that five is on that uh, one to nine scale. That is the, the 15 to 25 percent uh, body weight as, as fatty tissue. So basically, if energy goes into the body, and you guys know this from human nutrition, if energy goes into the body, if it's not needed at that point in time, it's stored. And where is it stored? It's stored in fat. It's stored for the rainy day. It's stored for the future. So that's our, the way we are designed. Um, this one kind of amazed me. Fat cells can increase 20 times in diameter. So if you start here and then you can go to there. I mean, that's, that's a lot of flexibility in the cell membrane of a fat cell of an adipocyte. This, wow. So if those fat cells, if those 10 million fat cells are there in the puppy and they're this small, but they're still fat cells, energy comes in, the body is not used and it gets stored in those fat cells, that dog's going to get pretty big. It's going to be 104 pounds on a 68 pound frame. So that's, a, that's pretty amazing. Um, this was back to your thing, Mike. So a 100, 100 calorie treat per day for a year is 36,500 calories. So if there's 3,500 calories, and this is, I had to, had to be reminded of this, 3,500 calories in a pound of fat, and you get up to 3,600, that's one treat every night is gonna put 10 pounds on that dog frame. That's pretty shocking, because a 100 calorie dog treat and maybe you can attest to this, Don, is not that unusual. You said your dog treat was how much? It was like 130, I think it was 136 was one of the kind of big, crunchy, yeah. all natural, baked. Sounds great on paper, but if you, if you read labels or you call the company and find out how many, when, when we go back to that and do the diet intake for the week, then we need to measure. We need to know how much is going in. 10 pounds a year, 10 years, what do you think? Whoa! <laughs> so that's how quickly things can change with a small change. And so that's why we're hopeful. We, don't, we know we won't change human behavior to refuse snacks, not give snacks. So we're hopeful we can toot, switch it around a little bit and give different snacks with a lower calorie amount. Now another thing, you asked about satiety, Don. If there were a diet out there that used the new scientific genomics, it's a term that we use to say we're playing with the gene expression, if we could express genes that increase BB's metabolism and suppress genes that increase appetite, so we would actually decrease the appetite, and that was all in one diet, and it basically caused the gene, since we know the gene map of the dog, and it caused the genes that we're dealing with to be properly expressed as a wild dog's gene expression would be, that would be a pretty cool thing. Stop the appetite, increase the metabolism. So that diet is, is on the market. It's done. And we use that metabolic diet for patients who are not satiated. They just want to eat, 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 eat. And we've had some really good luck with that. And, the, and back to the why, you know, why are we doing this? It's a health risk. So it's not just um, I can't move as well. And, you know, the, yes, there's arthritis that predispose inflammatory products go into the bloodstream and it sets them up for all kinds of things. So you have pancreatitis issues, you have diabetes issues. In cats, you have hepatic lipidosis, which is a liver condition that is lethal. And that happens in over, overweight cats. We have dogs that have skin folds that they're rubbing because there's so much tissue. So you have dermatitis if you get into the skin issues. Um, it's just, it's, it's amazing. And then you have not only that, but the list of cancers, both in humans and dogs, you, you're 
more likely to have a cancer. And again, my theory is you have inflammatory products in the system all the time. The immune system is suppressed, cannot take care of the cancer cells that are there, so therefore increased expression of cancer. So I'm, I, that's my theory based on all the, the things that I have read. Um, putting in perspective, you know, one of the things we try to do is give uh, percentages. So if a 10-pound dog or cat weighs 12 pounds, 10 to 12, okay, I can do the math, that's 20% overweight. That would be similar to a 150-pound person weighing 180 pounds. So that's a pretty big, you think of a 150-pound person weighing 180 pounds, they're going to have a different activity level. And unfortunately, they're going to be predisposed to uh, a lot of health issues as well. So two pounds, oh, that's not too bad. Well, maybe it is. It depends on how you look at it. it depends on what, what we're doing percentage-wise.